Welcome back! Better than Let's Play Episode 2. I'm Enigmius, and I've been busy. Busy. We are all over the place today. You can see I built a smeltery. We've added a little bit to the structure of our central facility. I've got a prototype staircase. What? How do you make a prototype staircase? Well, I did. It's not done. It looks like crap. It works like crap. Uh, but there's a few more details that we'll be adding. You can see I've got some machines in there. That engine that's going crazy is actually running the powered furnace that, amongst other things, is churning stacks and stacks of cobblestone into smooth stone. Now, I did read your feedback, and I fully agree. It's much easier to get large quantities of smooth stone with an igneous extruder, some lava, and some water, and then just let it go. For now, because I have so much cobblestone, I, I hate wasting it, so I'm just converting it. And also, I don't have any storage set up besides the chests that you see lying around so I, I will be switching over to an igneous extruder for the smooth stone but not quite yet you can see we've got another floor going in here as much to try and give myself space to start putting things where they're ultimately going to stay than anything else i don't really need this space now you can see the floor that i'm the cameraman is standing on is basically uh, you know 90% available for whatever I might want to use it for but that's not necessarily where I want to put everything So we got a couple of windows going in place and then it's time to go outside and start building up the walls <laughs> You can see in the sort of the lower left there that sort of square frame with the smooth stone That's the outline of one of the smaller towers and then down in the bottom middle you can just barely see the frames of the quarry that's cleaning out the area for another of the small towers. But mainly, I've got all this smooth stone and I'm actually running out of space to store it with what I've got. So rather than make another chest for it, I'm gonna use it up, we're gonna build up the tower. The tower's gonna be big. It's gonna be very, very big. And I'm not really worried about making it large and then feeling compelled to fill it up with things to justify why I made it that size. It's mostly about the aesthetic. And you can see, more from the ground level here. It's starting to get some height to it. You can see the quarry going there, clearing out the area for the tower on the right. I'm mostly wanting this thing to look a certain way from a distance, and I was actually out exploring the other day and kind of lost my way a little bit until I kind of turned around and then off in the distance I could see the tower looming as it was already. So it's definitely got some benefit, but mostly it's just going for the looks. So as much smooth stone as I can gather and then just build it up and up and up until I'm satisfied that it's high enough, which will probably be about twice the height it is now. So quite large. Now there's going to be more details on the outside. There's going to be more windows uh, and things of that nature. Those are the kinds of things that I'll go back after the fact and kind of take a look at the thing as a whole and decide exactly where I want to put everything. Uh, and I would prefer to uh, give myself a little bit of creative leeway in terms of what materials I want to use for those details. Now, I needed some emeralds. You can see I've got two. I traded some wheat for them. Those are for the MPS Tinker Table for making the MPS Power Armor. And then I decided it was time to go. I'll save you, villagers. I, I don't think I was helping them as, as much as I hoped I was. Uh, in fact, it's very possible had they stepped the wrong way that they would have died as well. Now, this is the nether. And I'm not uncomfortable in the nether, but this is my first time in a Natura-influenced nether. Which is obviously very interesting because there's so many different things that you kind of look at and you're like, hmm, what's that? Now, this is one of those cases where I could have gone to the wiki immediately and done a thorough review of everything that I might find and then use that information when I come to the nether to make certain decisions and choices and react to things a certain way. In this case, I decided to just go in and kind of figure it out as I went, which is actually kind of fun. Now, there will be a point where I feel like I've explored as far as I want to on my own and I will resort to the wiki to fill in the gaps, but for now, all I know is I went to the nether without a shovel, which is normally not a big deal. But in this case, it, it was kind of a big deal because there's the corrupted dirt or whatever it is, the tainted earth, dirt, what purple stuff. And if you don't have a shovel, it's kind of a bitch to dig through. So 
I've been using a lot of dart craft armor and tools up to this point because it's easy to make, it's quick to make. It doesn't require a ton of exotic materials. Some of it can be pretty good. The one thing that I've learned is that I do not like the speed enhancements on the armor. I've al already flung myself into a pool of lava once. And I would be just as happy to never do that again. So I don't use the speed enhancement on the armor anymore. But the shovel with the heat, which maybe we'll take a look at in the next episode, is actually pretty cool for certain things. And this is a little bit of hinting. We've got the Enderman. I need Ender Pearls. I need a lot of Ender Pearls for the modular power suit stuff. So I find this guy in my base. It's so convenient. I smack him. He teleports. I smack him. He's gone. So I've started using the Bane enhancement on all of my weapons. Uh, it helps. It, it actually helps. And there you see the shovel doing what I needed it to do. And basically, I'm out for nether brick now. I've got the glowstone. You saw me getting that the first little bit here. Now I'm looking for nether brick. And I know you can make nether brick, but I don't care because it's also usually pretty darn useful to have access to another fortress for things like blazes and wither skeletons. Uh, even though I've seen, I'm pretty sure I've seen wither skeletons spawning away from nether fortresses around here somewhere. I much prefer just find myself another fortress and then not only do I get the nether brick, I've also got access to that fortress. It's not quite so simple <laughs> in the Natura influenced nether. So I'm doing my best to tunnel where I can. If I do I would rather tunnel over a segment than build a platform over it if I can manage it. Um because of things like this, because of things like ghasts who just sort of appear out of nowhere and start barfing all over you. Now this is one of those cases where it starts with one ghast and then all of a sudden you've got another ghast and then you're on fire. <laughs> and that's usually a pretty good indication that things are out of control. But in this case, I decided to stick it out the, uh, the Darkcraft armor actually does a pretty decent job of defending against burning. <laughs> Even though I'm about to lose... Yeah, there we go. Half of my armor just broke. So, at this point, there's nothing that I can tunnel through to get across this area. I've kind of poked around and seen that there is another fortress on the other side, so we're going to take our chances, build a little platform across, Try and set it up, you know, I want it safe as soon as possible. When it's one brick wide, it's not safe. It's it's waiting for one gas explosion to bounce you off, and then you're in serious, serious trouble. So we kind of fill it out as best we can, and ideally get some sort of rail on here to offer a little bit of protection, and also pre prevent those bounces from happening, from knocking us off. You can see, not a moment too soon because ghasts. I don't normally mind ghasts, but there was a time when I would have access to flight in some capacity very, very early in the game by way of jetpacks, and since I don't really use industrial craft anymore, I don't have that jetpack access, but we still managed to find another fortress. Now, this is where things got kind of interesting. <laughs> Because the idea is, I didn't want to just jump down onto this thing without a way to get back up to where I was. That's, I mean, my priority is always making sure I have an escape route before I do anything else. Because there's no point going out and gathering materials that you're just going to lose if you die because uh, you ran into trouble and you didn't have a way of getting to safety. So, it wasn't that far down. I decided, alright, we'll jump down and we'll build a staircase up. Everything will be fine. Just no gasps, please. <laughs> That's usually your first sign that things are about to go badly for you is when you're thinking, all I need to do is get this done without a gasp coming along. <laughs> it's not a good idea to say that. So I get it mostly done. You can see there are two nitro creepers down there on the ground. 
Now after taking a look around, I feel like it's pretty safe. We're gonna go down, we're gonna start extracting the great nether brick. The reason why we're here, all the nether bricks and then the gas. And I'm like, oh, don't fall down. I, I, I have to stop talking to myself because I usually do what I tell myself to not do. So the one nitro creeper took off about half our health bar and the fall took off the rest. We survived with half a heart. Now here I'm basically done. At this point, I'm like, okay, I've got the nether brick. I've got the glowstone. I've got everything that I came here for. Now I just want to get out of here, get back to the overworld and start putting things together. And I noticed there's one of the giant heat scar spiders just outside and I'm thinking do I want to go up there and have him just scale the wall and beat the crap out of me or do I want to kind of take my time do things a little bit tactically we'll make an opening here where we can attack him but he can't come through to get to us so we we, we slap him we get him with our sword that will be the only hit that we land on this bastard <laughs> because for whatever reason we can't hit him anymore. And I know what you're thinking, move closer to the edge, so I did. And I got that for my trouble. <laughs> and on and on and on it would go. I wanted, I wanted to kill this guy first of all because I wanted to see if he dropped anything fun. Um, but also because it's this big, giant, nasty spider. And I thought for sure I had set myself up to fight him without a ranged weapon. And I was going to get him no matter what. No matter what. Nope. <laughs> Can't hit him. I don't know why. I was I was starting to think that maybe he was hitting me with something that gave me a debuff that made it so that my weapon attacks didn't do anything. I'm still thinking that might have been the case. But now the ghasts are joining in. They think it's all fun and games. They're laughing at me, puking all over me. Still can't hit the spider, but he can hit me. And then insult to injury, the fireball comes through and all it does is light a fire directly under where I was standing. Welcome to the nether. So by the time this guy uh, basically demonstrates to me time and time again that no, I will not be able to kill him, I head back to the overworld. All this for a magma crucible so that I can melt redstone into liquid redstone Make the components that I need for the high-voltage capacitors, for the modular power suits, armor, and what... The high oh, one, one is for the railgun, and then the rest is for things like the shields and the energy storage. Actually, maybe it's just the energy storage. Either way, plenty of use for molten redstone. So in the next episode, we're going to pick up where we left off. Please, by all means, leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for all of your feedback after the last episode. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.